Um, well, first of all, we, we are speaking in a funny moment where on one hand, we are busy preparing for UN 2023 for March after many milestones from the bone water uh, dialogues uh, last year that came up with the idea of a UN special envoy, for instance, on, on, on water with Dakar, with Dushanbe, UNESCO uh, uh, this week. Uh, so we, we're busy on that. At the same time, we've got a member of a permanent member of the Security Council weaponizing water infrastructure as we speak. Um, so nevertheless, we need to look uh, forward. And um, here from Geneva, we are lucky, and those of you who know Geneva and we've met, I've met some of you in Geneva, know why Geneva is so important when we talk about water. Precisely because Klaus spoke about food security and DG ECHO is extremely involved in all the humanitarian dimension of Geneva. And of course, there is a strong water footprint uh, in all the humanitarian uh, um, space. Uh, Irina Bokova started her remarks uh, with uh, the right to water that came from the Human Rights Council 2010, if I'm not wrong, followed by a UNGA a resolution recognizing the right to water. So the dimension of human rights is also very important. I could continue, of course, science, WMO, as um, Lars mentioned, uh, the early warning, uh, early action system being developed also for climate and water uh, under the auspices of WMO and at uh, COP27, uh, Egypt was pushing on some additional uh, mechanisms, especially this project AWARE that some of you may have uh, followed. So it's really interesting to look at that, not necessarily from a water specialist, but from a more a broad, broader view, because as many of you have said, the water needs to be looked at outside of the water silo. Of course, SDG6 is super important and all the targets are, are important. But when we speak of food security, uh, disaster risk reduction, or the nexus with energy, et cetera, we of course need to look beyond uh, the water uh, um, uh, silo. And it's not easy, uh, as some of you ha have said, everything is linked and water basically defines uh, in a large part our interdependence. But maybe just uh, as a remark to uh, what uh, Matt Carson was, was saying, uh, just an anecdote, this being in Switzerland is really interesting because Nobel Prize winner Elinor Ostrom, who theorized the concept of common pool resource that is totally relevant for, for, for us here, comes from her observation in a large part in the Swiss mountains, how people were managing water collectively. So social contract and local governance uh, schemes, extremely, uh, extremely uh, important here. And uh, I really appreciate what uh, uh, he said and all others said. Um, in Geneva, um, there's also one additional element, I think, that is coming to the front. Uh, climate change is adding pressure on an, ex ex on an already very tense situation. Uh, it's been said by, by others, uh, climate change is changing the basically the water cycle. Too much, too little water, not at the right moment. And it basically adds attention to a, a very difficult situation already. This is why uh, here we are so uh, involved and in pushing together with our colleagues from the capitals of the EU uh, and with a delegation in New York to push transboundary at the front. You know, it was not easy uh, to ensure that the question of transboundary water would be at the agenda of the UN 2023. Uh, it's very sensitive for all the reasons that you know. Uh, and even Tajikistan, uh, was it a reluctant in the beginning, as some of you know, uh, to have this concept uh, in the interactive dialogues that have been uh, agreed uh, recently? So for us, it's very important that politically to be pushing for transboundary to be kind of toward the top of the pile of priorities in 2023. For all the reasons that you know, because transboundary water management is not only important from a perspective of environment, but also, of course, from a perspective of economic development with all that comes with flood management, fisheries, 
and there is a very virtuous circle that emerges between trust building and economic development. I think the example of uh, the Senegal water basin is eloquent and we've got many other uh, examples. That's why from a more political perspective, we are very strong pushing for this transboundary uh, aspect in UN 2023. And this is part of what we call in our EU jargon, Council conclusion uh, from the Foreign Affairs Council uh, from November uh, 2021 on water and external action. So we already have a political view on that and we are pushing that. But we're not only pushing that theoretically, uh, when I was in Brussels a few years ago dealing with uh, with the climate, I had a chance to meet quite a few of, of, of you from uh, Brice to Akima uh, in the different COPs. Um, we were uh, already uh, working on uh, supporting the Secretariat of UNECE in this phase of globalization of the convention to reach out to many countries around the world and a lot in Africa. And since then, uh, we've had quite a few uh, uh, countries uh, from the African continent joining the convention and more to come. Just last week, there was a workshop in Tanzania where our colleagues from the delegation uh, were participating with the Secretariat of the UNECE because they will be joining soon. So I think for us it's really important that this convention and the other, the 97 convention, are ratified. And in a way, that's clear, uh, deliverable, I would say, for UN 23. 2023, as our Dutch and Tajik uh, colleagues have put forward this action agenda, this very action-oriented uh, uh, outcome of the conference, because it was explained before, there is no negotiated outcome, but an action agenda. I think it's very concretely one of the things that we can expect uh, from this conference. Uh, some of you mentioned also the a special on boiling water, it still needs to be refined, uh, where it stands, what are his responsibilities, his mandate, how to interact with UN water, all of that still needs to be refined, but I think there is a political will uh, to move forward with that, and at the last uh, PGA uh, consultations uh, a few weeks ago, we had over 150 countries supporting the concept of the UN uh, water and boil, of, but now the details need to be looked at. Uh, time is short, so maybe I, I will um, uh, also say that beyond our political support, we are supporting financially the Secretariat of the Water Convention, basically to work on a much bigger scale than in the past. And just in July, we uh, announced, we confirmed a three-year support again for this uh, convention for first economic development, peace building are two sides of the same coin, and we really pushing on that. And of course, behind that, there is also the more traditional uh, EU instruments of uh, INPA, formerly uh, DEFCO, where we are working with NIA and INPA in many countries, uh, close to 60 countries on national water uh, plans, but also what we call in our uh, infinite uh, EU jargon, Team Europe uh, approach, uh, the EU and eight member states are also supporting, have developed and they announced it at the Dakar Forum, a big uh, program on transboundary water uh, in Africa. And we already work with quite a few of the basins. And uh, I think someone in the beginning mentioned uh, the Mauritanian uh, Senegal uh, aquifer, which is also one initiative that we are pushing very strongly. So maybe in, in a nutshell, just to say that uh, I think we are, we put a lot of hope in this uh, 2023 uh, conference, 46 years after the first and only one. Um, and it's a moment to seize and uh, the EU and its member states are, are ready to, to be at the, at the rendezvous. Thank you, Marie-Laure.